Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today we're going to spend some time together doing a beautiful watercolor uh, mushroom and flowers design. I published a few shorts about a design that I was doing for a dear friend of mine for her birthday and I received many positive comments and feedback and some people asked me if I could do the tutor tutorial where you can see the whole process step by step. So here I am. For today practice you will need uh, your watercolor journal or a watercolor piece of paper. If you have a big pad, I suggest you to divide the pages like the sheet in two halves so you don't commit to a very, very big design. I always think the starting with a small, medium size is better so you can commit to it entirely and you can always finish what you start. Um, watercolor, I'm using traditional watercolors. You can use any brand that you have available. In case you're using watercolors like I will, you need also one or two small and extra small brushes, a cup with water, paper just in case you need to tap the brush on the paper, a pencil for drawing of course and an eraser just in case you need to modify and change something in the design. I'm using my watercolor journal which is a small rectangular journal so my space you know is not going to be huge so this practice is not going to take too long however as you know I don't speed up my video so I really show you the process the way it is which means that you can prep your material that I will uh, write, of course, it's everything in the description box. So you can prep your materials and practice with me along the way. Or you can watch my videos entirely, which is hopefully is very relaxing and inspirational. And you can practice at your own time and convenience. Or according to your schedule and your time availability, you can divide my practices in two parts or three parts. You can do the design, the first part, the painting, and maybe finishing the last details on the last part. Or you can, you know, just do it in two parts. Whatever I think is better for you. Remember that my videos are meant to be really accessible and, you know, approachable for every skill levels, every type of schedule. So just as long as you commit to yourself and you commit to include some art practice in your life. If you can do it daily, good for you. But I would say that weekly or bi-weekly, you're going to really see benefits, not only on fine motor skills and a better knowledge about art techniques, but also really mental and social emotional uh, skills. You know, it's like it's going to be very beneficial. At least it was and it still is for me. And I truly believe it. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Please consider to peruse around my previous videos and if you like the content and the effort that I put into this channel, please consider subscribing and sharing. I have silver and golden membership available for very affordable prices. If you don't want to commit to a membership, you can still support me with, you know, sporadic donation if you wish so. And I also created a, a colorful and uh, and really cheerful Facebook group called Art with Miss B, when all of my subscribers can uh, post and share pictures of the artworks that they have been creating using my tutorials and video. And it's a beautiful, respectful and safe space for us to share and talk more about art that we all definitely need it. So I'm gonna switch the camera and we can start together these beautiful watercolors. Okay, friends, this is my little journal. I just uh, turn it in a vertical position because for this type of design, I feel that the, like a vertical rectangle is the best space for me. We're gonna start uh, to do some uh, sketch, uh, like a very light outlines to define our beautiful design. In this practice, we're gonna review some type of lines, so fine motor skills, lines, the use of space, not too much, not too little, something nice and balanced. And finally, we're gonna go back to our colors and play with the color wheel and see what happened, okay? So we're gonna start with uh, like a couple of curved lines over here, just to trace the first, uh, the stem of our mushroom. We close it underneath like, and then we're gonna do the top, the hat. You see, I don't start at the end. I start actually almost halfway through the stem. I'm gonna go side, curve the round, and back down. And then I'm gonna do the hat in these very nice organic shapes. We don't want anything too perfect, right? Now we're gonna kind of keep filling the space with different type of mushrooms. Maybe we can do some thinner, you know, 
stems and we play you see with different levels we're gonna close them and then this time we can do something a little smaller just like a really cupola feel free to change the shape of the mushroom if you wanted to ref like refer to a specific mushroom that you happen to love so much we are not really concerned in tracing real mushrooms we're gonna also add a couple of leaves uh, some flowers because you know these elements will give us the opportunity to play with the colors right so we want to make sure that we have enough element for us to play with i'm doing some like uh, sketching some grass i'm gonna do a pretty big fat mushrooms over here so you see we are kind of uh, placing our element a little bit on different level bottom medium so let's say foreground middle ground background so we're going to occupy this space properly We're not gonna do it too busy. If you wanna add, I'm just scribbling a few lines with a pencil to create a sort of an optical illusion for the texture of the grass, then I definitely would like to put something over here. Maybe this time we're gonna go and add the flower. So I'm gonna trace my stem with two parallel lines. I'm gonna pull it up just actually, I'm gonna put the center of the flower here this irregular circle and then I'm gonna trace my petals remember when we do petals we don't want them to look all the same they should not look too perfect so make these lines a little like you know squiggling lines some petals can be very very small some other big it's better because you create more variety we're gonna come up with the beautiful leaves over here Maybe we can give some nice lines and texture. As I say, I'm not referring now to a specific realistic flower, but I'm just more concerned and focus on creating a nice balanced composition. Even if it's not completely symmetric, it still creates this beautiful feeling of something harmonic. Let's see. Oh, probably I'm going to add the one more mushroom over here, maybe with a little overlapping. So I'm going to start this time from the top. And then I'm going to add the stem coming down all the way behind. Hmm? So we create this nice optical illusion also of space so with some overlapping positioning our element differently and changes in sizes now probably i will add some circles why not right who doesn't like some dots on mushrooms and remember that we can always add the more details and more um, patterns after we color And I would say that for now, I'm gonna put my pencil away and I'm gonna start to have fun with color. I'm gonna move closer my watercolor and I'm gonna proceed. You can do a little bit of the background before or we can do the background at the end. I will personally leave it at the end because I still don't know what color I wanna do it. If I wanna have a traditional blue or if I wanna have instead more of a peach, pink or whatever. So I'm starting to color first uh, the design and then I will go back and do the background. Now, if you're using traditional watercolors, remember that in this case, we really want to make sure that we are paying attention to the amount of water. Remember that the more water, the less saturated is the color, right? And also, the more bleeding and blending. So in this design, when we have something specific, we wanna make sure that we are able actually to control the colors. So the color stays inside the outlines that we traced. Now, if something happen, happens and you have a little like a 
accident, let's say that the color bleeds, it's not a big deal. You're gonna let it dry and if you need to retouch it, you will retouch it once it's dry or you can just let it be, embrace it, and then maybe with an extra fine markers, you can do the outlines and in doing the outlines, you can fix it. So remember, we do not panic if something like that happened, because as I always say, if you're new to this channel, maybe you don't know, but if you have been practicing with me, I always, always stress the fact that the process is more important than the final product. And even if the final product is not exactly what we expected, it is totally okay because it was worth it, the practice. You spend time doing something beautiful and meaningful. You spend time exercising your fine motor skills. You learn something new about what you want to do differently another time. So it was still extremely important and meaningful and definitely worth it. So we embrace the imperfection as they come. I always say to my students that we are going to, uh, we belong to the movement of imperfectionism, which I don't know, you know, like, uh, I don't know if it's a real thing or not, but I like to say that way because we need to embrace the unexpected surprises that happen mostly when we paint, mostly when we paint with the media such like the watercolors that are they come with this element of surprise, something that we cannot control 100%. And it's okay, and it's still cool. And even when we cannot control it 100%, we are still able to create something beautiful and meaningful with that media, which is such an important life lesson. You know, I'm, I tend to be a type A, personal teachers, so extremely organized, I think it through, um, I have everything set and planned and blah, 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 which is extremely, it makes me very efficient, of course, right? But it also comes with a lot of personal stress sometimes because I always, I also think about the outcome too much and too soon. And I should kind of uh, learn, of course, you need to be organize if you're a teacher and you need to absolutely be prepared so you need to do your planning but also leave opportunity possibility for the outcome i don't want to be i'm trying my best and definitely art practices help because they teach me all the time i want to really try to relax a little more and embrace the unexpected more and better with a better better mindset, you know? As you see, I'm mixing sometimes some like white uh, with some of the green, with some of the brown. I suggest you to do the same. I don't know what brand you're using and how many uh, color you have available. But remember, you can mix it, you don't have to copy. Maybe if you wanna go for a completely different color palette that I'm using, go for it. I'm trying, I wanna make it like a little darker when it's kind of close to the head of the mushroom, just because as we say, we wanna always have some value, right? We don't want the colors to look always so flat, but we definitely wanna have some spots of a more saturation or darkest color and some spot with less saturation. Proceed carefully, slowly. The pressure is important. Don't add the too much pressure. You should gently, gently touch the, um, the brush. So no pressure whatsoever. Let's uh, play a little bit with pink, which as some of you know, is not my Forte. So I'm risking it here. And if I don't like it, maybe I can just let it dry and then simply overlap with another color. But I might like it. Who knew, right? Sometimes I use a color or I create a color and say, oh, that's actually good. I like it. Sometimes it doesn't go that way and I create a color and say, oh my, I need to change that. Okay. 
but the more I paint, the more I teach art, the more I really find out and that all colors have something special. Each color has something special. They evoke some specific feelings, memory, and what I love is that colors that are, might be very special to me, they're not special for you at all and vice versa, which is something, again, wonderful about art that we learn about each other differences, right? And we appreciate them because they made us grow, We, you know? Now, let's see, let's start to play with some green for the leaves, the stem of the flower, and see what happens. Today is here, like where I live in Utah, it's like a cloudy, so light is not, light is not the best for us today but it's also the perfect weather to spend some time in the art studio and relax and create something together. So this is how I like to imagine us all practicing together in these beautiful virtual studios and in this beautiful virtual welcoming community that we are creating together and for which I'm very grateful. So I will never thank you all enough. I'm going to light up the green a little bit for this leaf and then see what happens. I feel that the action of painting this tiny design when you need to control the water, so the gesture are kind of, you know, slow and specific, it is so relaxing in its own like nature like just because you have to carefully take care of the space the design the shapes that you created you don't want to rush it See if we can play with these two green and make something medium darker for the bottom. If you want to like uh, make a color just a little more dull, you can mix a little bit of gray with the green. So you're going to create your tones. If you want to instead have it a little more on the pastel side, you can mix some white and you can have some um, tint of the same color. And if you want to create some shades instead, you're going to uh, mix black. Be careful with that because of course uh, black will impact the color much more than a gray or a white so just be moderate and try maybe on a separate pieces of paper just in case you know Maybe we can with a very, very little water, like we can go back uh, when I did my scribbles with a pencil, just like uh, re give some little texture to this grass and just then let it dry and see the water taking its course and do its magic. Now I'm gonna dark up a little bit that this leaf on one side more intense and I'm gonna go over and change this green a little bit. Now let's keep going and choose a color for our mushroom. I would say that probably I will do the flower first. I want a very warm red to start to kind of embrace these warm and earth tones and bringing it together to contrast the bright and intense green that I have been using. Nice. I'm gonna go 
into my petals. Every time, uh, because the color is fading, uh, it's less saturated, which I like it because it's gonna give me uh, a different foundation for each petal. So when I will overlap, uh, maybe a little darker or a little lighter color is gonna show differently. And this is, as I say, is the beauty of watercolors, right? Because there is always the little unexpected element we cannot really be 100% sure of how the color is gonna show. I'm just going uh, over some of the petals and some part of some area of the petals to create some value, right? And a little more interest. I'm just using the same red with a little less water. So it will give us a more intense and more saturated red. I think that I probably use the same red over here. Maybe just mixing it up with a little bit of orange. So we have a sort of more uh, orange red for the mushroom so very similar but not identical now I'm gonna try my best to stay out of this circle if something happened it is okay we know that unfortunately with watercolor we cannot go with the lighter color on top of a darker so this is why we want to pay attention to leave out the details that we don't need to paint right away but just in case, maybe if you have a little bit of acrylic instead or Posca markers, you can easily go on top of the watercolors once they are completely dry. So there are always way to fix, right? So now try your best, but don't be too concerned. And I know I should get a little smaller brush, but I'm lazy and I don't want to change a brush. I tend to paint with the same brush when it's possible. When I'm painting with acrylics, of course, because, you know, I switch from color to color and I want to have that flexibility without having to wash brushes during the practice, but just afterwards. So I use different brushes, but when I do watercolor, yeah, I get a little lazy. Now I'm just dipping the brush in the same dark orange red and I'm going over without adding any water just to make it a little more saturated on one side. And leave it a little lighter on this side. Gonna blend around the circle because we don't wanna see that lines with the watercolor very very nice and love it now i would probably go on a sort of a purplish light violet maybe i'm gonna mix actually with some of the indigo blue for this three mushroom over here let's see I'm gonna dip it into the water to light it up a little bit.
What I like about these type of practices that they give you an idea and with the same video, you can actually do multiple projects because maybe once you did the tutorial with me and you know which steps to take first and how you can use this technique, you will be able to um, really create other design that are similar, featuring more flowers and less mushrooms, so just exclusively mushroom, or you can... Uh, change the color palette and see if you want something like more on the uh, smooth like a earth toned more like a full type of palette or you want something intense and bright or you want to do a mix of it you know it's amazing from one side like we really one practice can boost our creativity so much and uh, I love the fact that I'm giving you uh, materials like tutorials so that you can even personal you can really personalize and create more and more out of them so it's like a, something that it's evolving with you as I would say well of course I need to add my favorite my aqua color my subscriber know this, but I love aquacolor. You remind me the oceans, the water, which is my happy place. Um, well, I have many happy places, I want to say, because here we are surrounded by gorgeous mountains. And, you know, Utah is just gorgeous, honestly. One of the most beautiful places I have ever lived. So that is my happy place as well. And then, uh, but when I... When I'm close to the ocean, specific type of oceans, I want to say when it's like clear, clear, the water is transparent and is not too agitated. That's my vibe. And so I try, I incorporate this turquoise into my life because I know that makes me feel good. This is also something therapeutic about art, incorporating colors that makes us feel in a way or in another can help us not only to feel better, but sometimes when a color evoke a sad memory or a weird feeling, actually is helping us to cope with what we need to cope. So regardless of the feeling and the sensation, I want to say that incorporating colors and work with the color theory, it's something therapeutic in itself and beneficial for all of us. Now I'm gonna go and grab some nice orange and I'm gonna have some fun. This mushroom is so fun because it's so many colors in it. And now, boom, we finish with this orange. over here. I'm gonna probably scrub this orange a little bit on these flowers. You see the part that were left out. I'm just cleaning basically my brush so there is some references, right? This red with this red, a little bit of orange over here. Then some nice light green connected with this blue and then some earth tone. Really like it. Now I'm gonna do a dark um, center for my flower like a black put a little bit too much water so I'm carefully 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 tapping the water and we leave it like that now I'm gonna really have I would like to get the darker green and just very gently if you wish to do the same do some nice pattern inside our leaves if you need to grab a smaller brush go for it I'm gonna twist gently my journal so it's gonna allow me to do it without oopsie covering 
what I am doing. You don't have to, or you can do it later with an extra fine brush. Once again, you do you. And you do whatever you think is the best thing for your practice. You can always also do it and try. And then if you don't like it, you let it dry or you can spread it and go over. I'm actually going to kind of outline a sort of, just to emphasize the outline of the leaves. That's it, maybe with this darker green. It is too dark, let's light it up. We can go back and also add some more. You know, it's like a tiny, tiny little strokes. Just go and proceed with tiny, tiny little strokes. You barely touch the paper, so extremely light texture. And look how pretty. They give us this nice texture for the grass some variety right on the color so it's really 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 nice just a very simple final touch now for what concerns the background you can go with a blue palette or you can go with a warm palette i would probably use a sort of a yellow mix with some light light peach to have this sort of a light coming from behind but just something that is also not too bright or sort of like that is can em like embrace this design in a gentle way so i'm preparing my color and this time we want to use a little bit more water because we just want to write kind of just play around with our brush brushing around the shapes right that we trace brushing it around our mushroom our leaves in the gaps between the mushrooms we dip more into the water so make sure that this time you have enough water in your brush you go around you can leave some white space between i like it very much when it does that and i kind of create a natural contour And maybe on the top we can even go lighter so you're gonna kind of dip the brush in the color then back into the water and then like pressing it down when you think that in my case now i'm lacking of the yellow and i want it just to intensify that brightness i'm gonna mix a little more yellow and then i'm gonna kind of take it from the other side of the design go around in the little gaps lose it up don't be too concerned just in case it overlaps you know it's such a light color that is not going to really interfere with our um, palette choice once again start from the corner go inside around the petals nice and smooth Dip just in the water and bring this color all the way. So we have a little more yellow in here, a little more on the peach side, and then we're going to kind of overlap the two gently. So look how pretty. It's very homogeneous, very um, natural, you know, organic. But at the same time, you have some more yellow and bright and intense on one side, a little more peach on the other side. So we create that this interest now we're gonna let it dry completely and then i'm gonna do some nice outlines with the extra fine markers so you can see the way that i can add the pattern and design and support the design that we already painted we're gonna just make sure that it's completely dry you will touch it and as long as you feel humid you're gonna let it set and dry when you touch it and it's dry it's time for us to start Okay, the design is all dry and I got my extra fine micron markers. If you have another brand, if you have a Sharpist or any other brand that you have available, it's gonna be okay. 
it's something that you don't have to do but i'm gonna show you the way it looks like with outline so then you can decide if you want to do it on your own piece or if you want to leave it the way it is or maybe use something different so what we are going to do we are going to just do very carefully and slowly first just the outlines of all the elements that we combined in this design And after we do the outlines, we can have fine. We can have fun and add something, some more lines, some more tiny little patterns, some more implied textures here and there, right? Oopsie, sorry. I'm gonna twist around so I can do it without bothering you too much with my hand, my left hand, always covering somehow the design. <laughs> I am really, I appreciate your patience because sometimes for, you know, if you're left-handed, you know what I'm talking about. It's not only a matter of the way that you hold the pencil or the pen of the tools that you're using, but it's also the way that we kind of uh, figure out our own way to move our hands around so sometimes you will really write almost in vertical i know and uh, in doing that we cover basically what is on our paper but it is where it is right <laughs> Piece, and then we're gonna have some fun. For the petals, remember your lines should not be too perfect, scribbling lines. More than fine, even better. And now I'm going to just do scribble, scribble, scribble inside at the center of a flower just to add a nice, interesting texture. Then something that I really love, I'm gonna add some nice lines. So the, for like in order to make the lines look kind of natural, spontaneous uh, just don't push too much so don't add almost any pressure on the markers and to kind of do it uh, a little like faster so don't think too much so in doing that you see sometimes that the black show the black of the marker show more sometimes less and give us uh, that beautiful result that we want uh, something like you know spontaneous and natural not too geometric, not too perfect, not too, you know, perfect and precise. We want it squiggle the lines, don't overthink, don't be afraid and let it go. I think I'm gonna amplify some of the lines into the leaves, regardless of the fact that I did the darker green lines and the veins, I just like it. 
just makes me happy just doing lines inside the leaves well they always say that happiness in the simplest things here we go now i'm gonna do some nice uh, diagonal segmented tiny lines just to add some nice texture on the flower stems right and then with my markers i will do some scribble also on the grass not too much because i really like the uh, texture that we created before with the brush but just like you know to go to play along with that now i'm gonna take care of the bottom of all the mushrooms and i'm gonna do this nice uh, like lines that goes all the way from the stem all the way to the uh, edge of the head these lines should be a little curved and they start in a diagonal and then they end up to be almost right on the horizontal Once again, don't make them, don't worry about the perfection of this line. Actually, they really need to look natural, right? They just kind of amplify that optical illusion of the cavity inside underneath the mushroom hat. And they also add another element of interest into this design. The eyes of the viewer, so your eyes will go from the mushroom to the colors, from the patterns that we are creating, right? Back and forth. So it's gonna definitely create more interest. I'm gonna do the same on these two leaves. Here. One here. Now we're going to take care of this one. I'm going to turn a little bit around. I'm going to add one more. In this case, the closest are the lines, so the better is the results like the optical illusion at the end and the design just remember and don't concern yourself with the perfection of the lines if there is some squiggling going on better try to curve them one last over here if you need to go slower go slower remember that you have to do you you can always pause the video or you can let it go and you will finish it after it's totally fine now we're gonna support a little bit that pattern that i try to create at the beginning but then i cover up maybe we can have fun what i like to do this it's like tiny tiny segmented lines in different direction it's like hatching this is also uh, the name of the technique when we shade and color like that for example with a pencil when we are doing a drawing we can do, we can shade it traditionally, but we can also use these tiny little diagonal strokes that are called hatching. Is it called hatching? Maybe I'm gonna do actually a little pattern here. A few more lines, and maybe in this one also, just to. And let me see. Oh. Well, I'm gonna do the same diagonal segmented lines 
that I did on the flower. I'm gonna do it also on this mushroom just because you make it just better. You know, the difference is into details, right? Why not? We came so far, so we can dedicate a couple of extra minutes. Probably I'm gonna add also some just dark spots to enrich the pattern on this mushroom and maybe just on this one only on the side to add a little prettiness oh look and i was about to forget this outline and a few more here just over here and there and we are all done so now we have the design completely done with the outlines i'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye okay friends we did it again and this is our beautiful design that i that we created together and remember, if you subscribe to my channel, you can then ask uh, to join the Art with Miss B Facebook group where you can post actually the picture of your own design. And I would love to see the media that you use, the colors that you use, and what changes did you make to the design that I just showed you. And I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful day. And I see you all very soon with another practice. Ciao a tutti!